بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In the 27th hadith of the 40 hadith Imam al-Nawi rahimah Allah He contextualizes for us reality And that is that Iman is tied into good character And that good character should manifest itself in the way that we deal with others, the way we comport ourselves with others. And he gives us an insight into bir, the concept of bir, often translated as piety, right? But can encompass the term righteousness. And it means to go beyond the fundamentals. The practice of the fundamentals of the Sharia is what is called taqwa. To protect oneself. Like linguistically, the term taqwa means protection. To protect oneself from those things which will harm us and achieve Benefit in the dunya the akhira. So taqwa is the achieving of benefit in the staving away from that which is harmful, right? Or the abandoning of that which is prohibited and the practice of that which is obligatory to do. Bir is to go beyond taqwa. Right, beyond the practice of that which is fundamental and to grow in doing good deeds to grow in doing good deeds some of the scholars of tafsir have noted the term bir to have this meaning right, is to acquire righteousness to cultivate ourselves so that we're constantly growing the reality of life is that we're moving in between a state of tawbah and a state of acquiring iman. Acquiring iman through good deeds. The tawbah is returning from that point at which we find ourselves falling short either of our basic responsibilities right, in being people of taqwa or in not being people of bir. Not going beyond the basics. So that in itself, for us, in order to grow, it needs an acknowledgement and the return to our original purpose, which is to worship Allah wa ta'ala, and to grow in our relationship with Allah. The difficulty is the struggle with the self. That's the difficulty we encounter in the first order. And in the second order, the difficulty that we encounter is in our struggle with society or with others. Right? Which is another dimension of struggling with the self. But here it involves what, the rights of others. The scholars of Usul al-Fiqh, some of them, they make it a point to mention that Obligations in the Sharia are duties. The duty to do something or the duty not to do something. The duty to perform that which is obligatory or to stay away from that which is prohibited. Tied into the duties is the concept of rights. And in general, for simplification purposes, there are three types of right in the Sharia. The three types of right or rights. The right of Allah, the right of human beings, and that right which is a mixture between the right of Allah and the right of human beings. Like Tawheed is purely the right of Allah. But zakat is mixed right because you have the right of Allah and the right of the poor. 
It's an obligation that Allah obligates upon us. And it's a right that the poor have over our wealth when it reaches a certain percentage and other conditions are met. On the other hand, if we contract an agreement between ourselves and another human being, then we obligate upon ourselves to fulfill the conditions that are in that contract. Therefore, that person that we contract with has a right over us. So what we find then is that in this system of rights with which the Sharia characterizes for us in human interaction, in a spiritual interaction, this is the realm of bir and taqwa. Realm of bir and taqwa. Bir is to go beyond the basics of fundamental Islamic practice. To do something or not to do something. To perform the obligation of salah, to stay away from that which is haram. Right? The basics. Bir now is calling us to go the extra mile. To acquire good deeds. This is the context, right, that we want to think about this hadith in. قال عن النواس بن سمعنا رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أن البر حسن الخلق. والإثم محاك في نفسك وكرحت أن يطلع عليه الناس رواه مسلم إمام النووي رحمه الله يريد بالتسنى فما النواس بن سمعن رضي الله عنه from the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said bir is good nature and إثم is that which becomes agitated in yourself and which you would hate for people to discover. Imam Muslim narrated the hadith, so the hadith is sahih. Imam Nawawi rahimahullah here gives us an understanding of bir, which focuses on the character of the human being. So now we're moving away from how we understand bir as it was related by some of the scholars of tafsir. The understanding that are communicated came from the scholars of tafsir. But let us pay attention to this point. That Imam al rahimahullah narrates to us and communicates to us because it is essential because bir is tied into iman. So he, Imam al rahimahullah is tying bir into character and social relations also. He narrates from Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu that he said, Bir is a simple matter, a cheerful face and a soft tongue. And then he Related to ayat, rather those with true devoutness, bir, are those who have iman in Allah and the last day. Ithin, he says, is that which becomes agitated in yourself, that is, it becomes agitated and it goes agitatedly to and fro, and the self is not at ease about doing it. In the hadith, there's a proof that man must consult his heart when he wants to embark on an action. So then if the self is at ease with it, he must do it. And if it is not at ease, he must leave it alone. Right. And this is related to the hadith that we we previously spoke about. Imam Nawi says that the halal is clear and the haram is clear. So it's not just a matter of the heart. The sharia, the sharia for us sets the boundaries but the heart is involved so we have to train ourselves to do good deeds to exceed in good deeds so that we condition our heart to be at ease 
in doing that which is good and to be sensitive to that which is right harmful to us spiritually and materially and so on and so forth. So Imam al nawi gives us this understanding from Ibn Umar regarding bir. Not only is it that to exceed the basics of taqwa, right, but bir is to ornament ourselves with a character, with a character right, which is full of nur. Character which is full of nur, right, to be cheerful in the face, as Ibn Umar says, to have a soft tongue. Right? And this requires of us that our inner state is able to manifest itself. At least we should smile then, even if our inner state is not that, so that we accustom ourselves to that personality and we put ourselves more in line with the character of the Prophet. But the point of having a soft tongue is important Because many times We use our tongue as a sword And we hurt the feelings of others We hurt the feelings of others and We lack sensitivity There's a coarseness there So, again, Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah narrates from Ibn Umar that the reality of Bir is in the character and disposition of the person in speech and composure. Right? The way the person composes himself. Allahu alam. May Allah allow us to get benefit from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and purify our, heart, our hearts of those things which keep us from experiencing the joy of Iman, the sweetness of Iman, and practicing the Sunnah as a model of the life of the Prophet who was the embodiment of the Quran. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen.